JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's day daily market review for January the 27th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all the other major currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session on Thursday. It gained the most versus AUD, NZD and CAD in that order, while it decked out the least gains versus the British pound. Now yesterday the main event on the agenda was the FOMC decision and the strong dollar combined with the fact that the risk-linked currencies were the main losers suggests that the outcome was more hoggish than anticipated. This is also evident by the performance in the equity world. Ahead of the decision, European indices traded in, uh, in the green, with uh, Wall Street opening in a recovery mode as well. However, all three of its main indices came under selling interest in the aftermath of the Fed decision, with both the Dow Jones and the S&P dipping into the negative territory. Nasdaq finished uh, virtually unchanged. Now, the negative sentiment rolled over into the Asian session today. The FOMC decided to keep interest rates unchanged, as was widely anticipated, and the statement warned uh, it that uh, the committee would soon, um, would soon begin uh, raising interest rates to, to combat uh, persistent inflation, something that did not came as it did not come as a surprise either. So the reaction to that was some gains in equities. However, market participants were unable to hold on to those gains as Chair Powell's press conference had a more hoggish flavor. The chief said that the committee is of mind to raise uh, the federal funds rate at the March meeting, assuming that the conditions are appropriate for doing so and uh, that inflation has probably gotten a bit worse since the, since the last meeting. To the extent that the situation deteriorates further, our policy will have to reflect that, uh, the Fed chief added. So for us, and apparently for many other participants, the message was clear. A hike is coming in March, but most importantly, there is a decent likelihood for more liftoffs this year than the December dot plot suggested. According to the Fed Fund Futures, market participants maintained their bets over uh, four uh, rate quarter point increases, um, rate increases this year. Now, ahead of the Fed, we had another major bank deciding on interest rates, and this was the Bank of Canada. In contrast to market expectations, officials decided to leave interest rates untouched at 0.25%, something that resulted in an immediate slide in the loon. In the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that uh, the Council expect, expects uh, rates to increase and that the overall economic slag is now absorbed, with, which means that they are more likely to hit the hike button um, in March. However, they once again noted that the Omicron coronavirus variant is weighing on activity, with Governor Macklem adding that hikes will not be automatic, rather uh, they will take decisions at each uh, meeting. As uh, for our view, a more hoggish than expected Fed could continue to benefit uh, the US dollar for a while more and perhaps prompt m more participants to sell equities. This, combined with the less hoggish than expected uh, Bank of Canada, suggests that uh, the USD cut pair could continue drifting north for a while more. The other risk-linked currencies, such as Kiwi, could also stay pressured, while the Japanese yen may keep benefiting, despite the Bank of Japan being among the most dov dovish central banks. 
Now, as for today's events, during the early Asian morning, we already got New Zealand CPI for the fourth quarter with the year over year rate jumping to 5.9 percent, excuse me, from 4.9 percent. In our view, this confirms the case uh, for more uh, hikes by the RBNZ, but the Kiwi seems to be more sensitive to the Fed outcome for now. Remember that it is a risk linked currency. Later in the day, we have the first estimate of the US GDP for the fourth quarter, which is expected to have accelerated to 5.4% quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate from 2.3%, confirming the view that the US economy is among the best, if not the, if not, if not the best performing economies in the aftermath of the coronavirus outbreak. Following a hoggish Fed yesterday, this could allow market participants to keep elevated their bets over four rate hikes by the end of, uh, of this year. Now tonight, during the, during the Asian session Friday, uh, Japan's Tokyo CPIs for January are due to be released. As usual, uh, no forecast is available, is available for the headline rate, while the core one is forecast to have slid to 0.3% year over year from 0.5% underscoring the need for extra loose monetary policy by the Bank of Japan, even when other major central banks have begun to, to withdraw support. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8, at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.